Welcome to Module 2. In this lesson of Module 2, we'll take a quick tour of the important pieces that make up Earth's climate system. By the time you complete this lesson, including the activities and questions, you should aim to be able to first describe something about each of the major components in the Earth's system. Those are the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the biosphere, and the geosphere. Second, you should be able to talk in general terms about the main source of energy for Earth's climate system, which is the sun, and also what happens to solar energy once it reaches our planet. As you might already know, some of the energy gets reflected directly back to outer space, and some gets involved in the greenhouse effect and sticks around a bit longer before it too leaves our planet. Let's start with what you think right now. You are not a blank slate. Every one of us has ideas about how the world works. We've developed our ideas over our lifetimes, given our unique set of experiences. When we encounter new information, we have to make decisions about whether to incorporate it into what we already think. Sometimes we reject new information because it doesn't seem to fit. Sometimes new information helps us expand the complexity of our ideas. And sometimes we completely restructure our mental models based on some compelling new piece of information. It's important to identify for yourself what you actually think right now then later you'll have some basis for evaluating how your own mental model has changed or not. So take some time to do this. Get a piece of paper and a pencil, or open an electronic file in which you can draw and write. Get a timer and set it for 15 minutes. Take 15 minutes to draw and annotate what the phrase Earth's climate system makes you think of. I know, I know 15 minutes seems like a really long time, but see if you can stick with it. Now that you've recorded your own mental model of Earth's climate system, let's take a look at the main parts that matter for Earth. This is one of the set of famous images of the Earth taken from space. The first of these, called the Blue Marble, was taken in 1972 by astronauts on one of the Apollo missions. To see our whole planet, this tiny hospitable sphere in the vastness of space, gives us a perspective about our place in the universe that we just don't get every day walking around down here on the surface. This planet we live on is sometimes called the Goldilocks planet. You might know the children's story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. In that story, a little girl happens upon a home occupied by bears, who are absent at the time, fortunately. She finds everything in the house that belongs to the youngest bear to be just right for her tastes. Similarly, Earth, compared to our neighbors Venus and Mars, is the just right planet. Venus is crushingly hot, it has a runaway greenhouse effect. Mars is cold with wide temperature extremes due to its thin atmosphere. But here on Earth, temperatures are just right, so that most of the water here exists in liquid form, but solid ice and water vapor are also common. With its just right conditions, our planet harbors life forms in just about every nook and cranny, setting us apart from our neighboring planets. So what are the parts of Earth's climate system? that make this such a good place. We'll start off with a mass of rocky material orbiting a star. This is actually a picture of Mars, where it's easy to see the rocks everywhere, because there's no ocean and there's no vegetation covering up the rocks. Rocks are actually important for climate, not only because they provide the bulk of this physical planet, but because they interact with the other parts. Rocks don't last forever. They break down over time into their chemical constituents in a process that's called weathering. For most types of rocks, this process of weathering takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So on timescales of millions of years, if there are a lot of rocks getting weathered, this process can actually decrease atmospheric carbon dioxide and subsequently decrease the greenhouse effect. On the other hand, Volcanoes spew rocks and gases from Earth's interior and can add the carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere. Rocks have other roles too. They break down to form soils in which plants grow. Water moves rocks and sediments around. Rocks are home to the fossil fuels we burn. Plus, the vast majority of carbon on the planet is actually finely dispersed in rocks and sediments. Without rocks, we're completely adrift. The atmosphere is a crucially important player in Earth's climate. And it's very different here on Earth than it is on Venus or Mars. 
our atmosphere happens to be dominated by nitrogen gas, which is N2, which is about 78% by volume in dry air, and oxygen, O2, which is about 21%. We have close to 1% argon gas, and then tiny amounts of other gases, like carbon dioxide and methane and ozone, some noble gases, and other trace gases like chlorofluorocarbons. Water vapor is an important gas, and its concentrations range up to about 5% of the atmosphere if you're in a humid region, and down to virtually zero in dry areas. Of the gases in our atmosphere, the most important for climate are the greenhouse gases. And the more important greenhouse gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, which is N2O, and also ozone. Watch out for ozone, though. All the greenhouse gases, including ozone, have chemical structures that let them interact with specific wavelengths of infrared radiation coming upwards from Earth's surface. But ozone also has a second and more famous role, up in the stratosphere where it absorbs ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun. That's separate from the greenhouse effect. We'll get to the greenhouse effect in plenty of detail in a later module. In contrast to Earth, both Venus and Mars have atmospheres that are about 95% carbon dioxide. Venus's atmosphere is very thick, and it has a super strong greenhouse effect. Mars's atmosphere is quite thin, so even though it's 95% CO2, its greenhouse effect is weak, and Mars is really cold, at least by human standards. It's worth taking some time to uh, look up some comparative information about these near neighbor planets of ours. Okay, back to our atmosphere. In addition to the gases, we have a bunch of tiny little particles and droplets, which we collectively call aerosols. Some of these are shiny, and because they're shiny, they act like little mirrors, and they reflect some of the sun's energy back to space. So that's energy that doesn't ever reach Earth's surface. Other kinds of aerosols like soot from forest fires or from coal-fired power plants are dark colored, and they tend to absorb solar radiation. Without our particular mix of atmospheric gases and aerosols, Earth would also be a very different place. This is a photograph taken by astronauts from the International Space Station. It's a view looking down on the blue ocean. There's a big iceberg in the middle, floating, and there are clouds in the atmosphere. The iceberg is actually about 50 kilometers long, so it's a big iceberg. This photograph shows three of the primary important climate-related reservoirs in which water spends time on our planet. There are the vast oceans, which are the blue part. These contain about 97% of the water on the planet. There's the bit of ice shown, which is, of course, water in its solid form. Considering ice collectively, the ice in glaciers and in ice sheets are about 2% of the world's water. And then there are the water droplets or ice crystals in clouds in the atmosphere. An important fourth reservoir is in this picture, but not visible. It's the very important greenhouse gas, water vapor. It's in the atmosphere doing its greenhouse gas job, but we just can't see it. Notice the color differences between the dark ocean water, the white ice, and the white fluffy clouds. Dark ocean water absorbs incoming solar radiation really well because it's not very reflective. Ice and clouds are really good at reflecting that solar radiation back to space. These days, much of the extra energy in the climate system is getting absorbed by the vast oceans and heating them up. Water is crucial. Having a lot of liquid water on the surface definitely sets us apart from the other planets. And then we have life. Life is, of course, one of the crucial components of the climate system here on Earth. Living things exchange carbon and oxygen with the atmosphere. They participate in cycling nutrients like nitrate and phosphate. Vegetation on land helps to either absorb incoming solar radiation, for example, in dark colored forests, or to reflect incoming solar radiation, for example, in grasslands and dry desert ecosystems. And in the oceans, life takes up and releases carbon as well and marine organisms build the tiny shells that chemically buffer the ocean's pH and keeps it from changing too abruptly. The oceans are currently becoming more acidic, getting a bit ahead of the ocean's buffering capacity. 
When living things die, sometimes bits of the dead organic material get buried. And if it gets buried deep enough, and if enough of that dead organic matter accumulates in the same place, it might form concentrations of extractable fossil carbon. Many coal seams formed in ancient swamps. Oil and gas formed from buried dead marine life. The ancient biosphere, which harvested solar energy back then, is the source of carbon for the fossil fuels we burn today. Humans are a part of the biosphere too, and some of the things we do influence other parts. We've decreased biomass in some parts of the world through deforestation and through clearing land for agriculture, and we've increased biomass in other areas, either through abandonment of cropland over which forests subsequently grew back, or deliberate planting things. Life, of course, isn't necessary for a planet to have a climate. Mars and Venus have climates. If they did ever have life, it's minimal now. For Earth, though, life keeps our atmosphere in a very different state than it otherwise would be. So we have rocks, water, gases, and life, the basic categories of stuff in our climate system. All of these parts are visible, well, except the gases, in this image of our planet from space. Various materials like carbon, like water, like just about every chemical element, constantly exchange among these four basic categories. Think for a moment, looking at this image, about what parts change quickly and what parts change slowly. What parts can respond quickly to changes in temperature? What parts only respond to temperature slowly? All of the four big players, that's rocks, water, gases, and life, participate somehow in moderating the energy flows within Earth's climate system. The three big factors in energy flows are first, incoming energy from the sun. This is, of course, the source of energy to the system. Second, our planet's reflectivity. That is, how much of that solar energy gets reflected right back to space, and by what? If the distribution of materials on our surface changes, the reflectivity changes. Imagine, for example, if formerly light-colored reflective desert got replaced with dark-colored forests, Earth would reflect less energy and absorb more. And then third, the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse gases in our atmosphere absorb infrared energy emitted by our surface, and then they re-emit the energy in random directions. More greenhouse gases in the atmosphere mean that more of the radiation given off by Earth sticks around just a little bit longer than it otherwise would before heading back to the vastness of space. These three are the key processes by which energy enters Earth's climate system gets transferred around, and then leaves. We'll look in detail at each in Module 3. We've seen now a little bit about each of the four basic reservoirs of materials on Earth. Stuff constantly exchanges among rocks and air and water and living things. We've seen that the climate system's energy comes from the sun, and that two basic energy-related processes are key to our climate system. The reflection of incoming solar radiation, sending energy directly back to space, and the greenhouse effect, which keeps Earth's surface and atmosphere warmer than it would be without greenhouse gases. Take out your drawing again. What does it look like? Add at least two features or processes to your drawing that you didn't have on there before. Maybe add the exchange of carbon between the atmosphere and plants. Maybe add that ice reflects incoming solar radiation. Whatever it is, find two things to add to your own drawing.